Okay, so GitHub Copilot is out of beta and you wanna use it in NeoVim. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to add it to a basic config. I'm gonna leave a link in the description to the config I use in this video so you can follow along with the setup process with the actual config you'll see here. But before we get started with that, I figured I would give you a demo and kind of show you how this is going to work. So if you've already seen GitHub Copilot work before, I'm just gonna show you how it'll work in NeoVim. But if you've never seen it work before, then this should be pretty interesting, I guess. So we're gonna start by just telling Copilot what we wanna do. And what I found is that if I start with something really general in the beginning and then kind of drill down with more specific comments, then Copilot kind of works better. So I'm gonna say create a game where a user must guess and it's already trying to give me a game here and it's pretty close to what I actually want. So I'm gonna accept its suggestion there by pressing tab. And I'm just gonna change it between one and 10. So I'm gonna say create a game where a user must guess a number between one and 10 instead of one and 100 just cause it'll be an easier game to play. All right, so we're gonna create another comment here and it's gonna say the program will loop until, until, and it's already given me the rest of this comment, so I'll, I'll uh, accept this suggestion until the user guesses the number. All right, and we'll just say tell the user if they are too high or too low. Sure, let's accept that. So I'm not even really writing all the comments here. Now we're gonna get started and it says get a random number between one and 10, all right. And it's already ready to write the code. And let's see what it says next. It says loop until user guesses the number. So maybe it already knows what it wants to do to finish the program. All right, and we'll accept this. And I'm not even gonna look at the code. I'm not even gonna see what it did. I'm just gonna open up a terminal and I'm gonna run Lua game.lua. Now already you can see that it says guess a number between one and 10. I'm just gonna put one, it says it's too low, two, three. Um, oh, I guess I already guessed it. So the answer was two, all right. So let's run it again just to make sure it wasn't some kind of fluke. So let's go like this. Lua game.lua. So we'll do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, and nine was the number. So you can see it comes up with a new number every single time and we have a game and we wrote that code. We didn't even write any code, right? Uh, Copilot wrote all the code for us. I didn't even write all the comments to get this game really going at all. So what I found is that if you just kind of start with something really general at the top and then you kind of drill down with more specific comments as you go, that's kind of been the best way that I've gotten Copilot to do what I want. Now, I've definitely experienced times where it's been uh, buggy or it kind of loops over things and stuff like that. But um, for the most part, if you're real specific with it and you want it to do something pretty uh, pretty atomic, then it's then it's pretty it's pretty good. All right, so that was the demo. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to actually set it up, which is honestly pretty easy. So what I'm gonna do first is recommend that you head over to the MVIM basic IDE repo, um, cause that's where we're gonna be doing all this. But honestly, it's really easy to set up. You're really just gonna need a plugin manager and that's, that's really basically it. So we're gonna head over to another repo called copilot.vim. I'll also leave a link in the description for this one. This is from the actual, I guess it's like the official GitHub organization plugin. So you can be sure that I guess it should be well maintained. Also, uh, Tim Pope is working on it. So unless you're a total zoomer in the NeoVim and Vim space, you probably know who he is. A uh, guy who made Vim Fugitive, Pathogen, Surround, Commentary. So it's kind of like an OG in the space. Um, and he's the guy who made, who made this here. All right. So let's go ahead and read some of the readme here. We're gonna skip over a lot of this part here. You are gonna need a subscription. So GitHub Copilot is generally available now. It will require a subscription past August 22nd, uh, 2022. Uh, it'll be free for verified students and maintainers of popular open source projects. Uh, but if you've gotten this far, either you're probably paying for it or you're probably a student or a you know, a maintainer of a popular project and you just kind of want to set it up. All right, so getting started, first thing, you're obviously going to need NeoVim. In this video, I'm using 0.7, but I think this should basically work with any version past 0.7 for the most part. 
Also, we're going to need to install Node.js. Uh, at the time of this video, it works pretty well with 16, apparently. I'm sure it probably works with a few versions earlier, maybe 17, but it looks like Node 18 just isn't supported yet. Next, we're going to want to actually install GitHub Copilot as a plugin. Now, for this video and this config, I am using, let's see, uh, NVIM. Okay, in it .lua. And I should say too, I'm on the copilot-0.7 branch. So if you look over here in the repo that I linked in the description, you can check out the copilot-0.7 branch after you clone it, and then you'll, you'll have all the code from this video. All right, so let's open our in it.lua, and we'll just go over here under Lua, user, and head down to plugins, and we're just gonna search for uh, copilot. All right, and you can see that we're just doing use GitHub Copilot, and that's how we're pulling in the plugin. All right, so after you pull in the plugin, you're gonna wanna run Copilot Setup, all right? So we're gonna just do Copilot, and then you can just press Tab after that. And you can see all the things we can do here, but we just wanna run the setup function. Now mine is just gonna say Copilot Authenticated is GitHub user, and then my name, but yours is probably gonna give you a number and then it's gonna to say to copy it down somewhere. And then you just have to press enter. It should just open up your browser and then you just enter that number into the browser as long as you're signed into GitHub. It'll authenticate you and then you'll be able to use Copilot on your machine. All right, so after setting it up, that's pretty much all you're gonna to have to do. After that, if you just kinda of quit and just reopen a f like any file or whatever, Copilot should be working, right? So if I start typing something, you can see that already it's kind of giving me suggestions here. Okay. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to create a file over here called copilot.lua, and we're just gonna re require it in our init.lua file here. So let's open up copilot.lua. All right, and we'll go over some of the configuration options. There are not a ton of configuration options here, but you know, I figured I would just go over some of them just so you know how this works. All right, so the first one is gonna be vim.g uh, for global copilot file type. So pretty self-explanatory right now. XML will be false. Uh, most file types are enabled by default, so pretty much all of them are. So if we do XML false, then it won't work. We can come in here and we can add more. You can see Copilot is trying, I guess it, it doesn't like these languages here, but we're just gonna say like Java equals false, right? And there you go. So that's just how you would add another language so that GitHub won't start, or Copilot won't start. Uh, maybe you don't want it to work in something like uh, Markdown. Maybe it'll just start to annoy you in there. So you could like turn it off for Markdown, for instance. All right, now in another way, um, you might want Copilot to be disabled for everything and only be enabled for like one or two particular languages. Uh, what you can do is you can just put this star here. That's just gonna set every single file type equal to false. And then you'll just set the ones you want equal to true after that in the table. Okay, I'm just gonna leave this one up here as it is. Let's talk about key maps. So here is a Vim script way. So let's actually do this. So uh, in Lua, you can do vim.cmd, and then we'll just do this, okay? So this is the Vim script way of doing it. So this is just uh, in insert mode, we're gonna map control A to copilot accept. Right now, by default, it's tab. So what we can do, and let me, get, let me just hide that one for now. What we can do is we can say vim.g, dot copilot no tab map and that will turn off the tab key as the key that accepts the suggestion and instead we'll have uh, control a accept the suggestion so if you don't want tab to accept it then you can do that like that all right moving on so if we do have multiple suggestions and i don't know if i'm going to be able to pull up multiple suggestions maybe i can type them and then we'll see if it comes up with anything else you can see that right now I'm pressing, um, and let me show you what I'm pressing here. So I'm pressing Alt and I'm pressing the bracket there. And so I'm pressing both of them and you'll see this like one out of whatever show up over here. 
Right now it's only one out of one, but if it has multiple suggestions, you can kind of cycle through them with alt and bracket. Uh, you can obviously, you know, change these because you could just change them to the plug. So whatever you want to change it to, you can change it to. Uh, you'll just set a key map with plug copilot next as the actual command you run for whatever key that you choose, right? So, but by default, it is alt and bracket or either one of the brackets to cycle between suggestions. All right. Now to dismiss the current suggestion, we're gonna use control and then the closing bracket. So let's uh, try again here. We're gonna do RE. Uh, let's see if we can get any. Okay, here's one where we can get multiple suggestions, right? And all it's doing is deciding whether or not you wanna put these parentheses here. Okay, but if we want it to go away, we're gonna do control and closing bracket and that'll get rid of it and it'll get rid of suggestions so that you can kind of, you know, start typing, but just be aware that it will just, the second you type the next key, it'll come right back. So, yeah. All right, and then this is the highlight. So right now the uh, GUI foreground for, for the actual suggestion text there. Uh, so here you can see like this, this color right here, right now that is that color right there. All right, and so that's pretty much it. That's all the configuration options. Just make sure you know that you actually require this in init.lua, you write it somewhere that's actually being, um, being required or being, um, you know, it's in the scope of your config if you're not using this config right here. One other thing I'll say is if you're using CMP or some completion plugin, I recommend that, for instance, in CMP, the completion plugin that I'm using right now, and maybe way in the future, there's a different one that you're using, um, but it has ghost text. So if you set ghost text equal to true, then it will override the ghost text that you see that you see Copilot using, and then you won't see any of the Copilot suggestions. I also, while I'm using this, I kind of like setting completion equal to false, like auto completion. So if I set this equal to true, for instance, and then we'll save and come back in, and I start typing here. I don't know actually why nothing's showing up. I feel like, well, whatever. If, uh, if something was showing up there and then the kind of box was there, like this box right here, sometimes it can kind of get in the way, right? So yeah, this can get in your way and it just kind of gets annoying. So I kind of just don't like it there if I'm using a, if I'm using Copilot. I figured I'd mention that if it doesn't bother you, you can obviously close this with control E, right? So that, that's the way that CMP works. So if it's kind of in your way and you want to get to the suggestion and you don't want to get rid of autocomplete, then you can just press control E to kind of get rid of it. And you can press control space to bring it back up. Um, that's just something you should probably know about this particular uh, completion plugin and you probably will have one similar that will be able to do similar things. All right, so that's pretty much it. That's all of the configuration. That's kind of how to set it up. It's really actually extremely easy to set up. Uh, one thing I will say as well is that if you do want help with anything, you can do help and then copilot. Uh, let's do copilot if I can spell. Okay. And this will bring up the help document for Copilot. So this is where I learned all this stuff from. Like some of the stuff that I had in there is just copy and paste directly from this file. So you can kind of read over this and then you'll pretty much know everything I know about Copilot in NeoVim. All right, so let's see, that's pretty much it for this video. I don't think there's really much else to go over. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe. You can support me over with GitHub sponsors over on my GitHub page here. Um, there will be a link in the description. You can support me over on Patreon. Follow me on Twitter at Chris at Machine. And you can also check out my website, chrisatmachine.com. I'll see you guys in the next one.